Good morning, everyone. Um, I do apologize about my roughness right now. This week has been a workout week for me, and so um, I've just been like thugging it out, shall we say. But um, I wanted to make sure I came on and did this live video because <clears throat> it is a part of a assignment and a challenge. And um, for those of you who may know me and for those of you who do not know me, my name is Ebony Cruz. And I recently made the transition from radio to doing business online. Um, and some of you may ask why. Well, the reason why I went back to school to get my master's one to just to learn how to do business in general. Um, but to start doing business online was because I wanted more of freedom for my family. Oh, my gosh. Hey, you guys. Hey, Dante. Hey, Kathy. Uh, look at classmate in there, Atiba. Hey, Tobias, how y'all doing? Good morning. But um, the reason why I do what I do is because um, I actually enjoy seeing people, uh, women that has gone through some of the similar things that I've gone through grow. Um, a lot of people do not know this about me, so I'm going to say this and hopefully this video gets deleted. <laughs> but if it doesn't, it's out in the universe. Um I went through a separation a couple of years ago um, and it was kind of like a shocking separation. You know, when you're in a relationship and you think that everything is on the up and up, I'm supposed to get married. And I actually found out it was a lot of extra things going on um, during this relationship. You know, he was messing with some people that were in my circle, shall we say. Um, so I left my home and decided to be like, I'm out. I'm, you know, we'll figure out the separation later. I'm out. Um, moved away. And when I moved away, um, uh, again, like I said, I left my home and didn't really pay attention to uh, what would happen to our house. Well, apparently he didn't care neither. And um, my house went into foreclosure and I was served foreclosure papers by uh, two sheriffs in um, Orlando, Florida, because that's where I had relocated to um, on my job. And first of all, it was so embarrassing that it was unreal. But second of all, um, I got fired two days later because my boss told me that is not the type of um, attraction that they wanted at the um, at their job. They didn't want that type of attention. And so I lost my job. So not only was I going through a separation, um, I was going through a foreclosure that I found out on my job and I um, um, lost my job. So I had to move back home. It was no other way for me to do it. I had to move back home and I was so ashamed and so embarrassed and just did not want to talk to anybody about it. Um, but I still try to keep my spirits up, you know. Um, so I moved back home. Um, hey, Duafe. Hey, Danny. Hey, is it uh, the, is something? Oh, the music man. Sorry. Hey, the music man. What's going on? Um, so I moved back home with my parents um, and was trying to just figure out a way to do it. Mind you, I had two kids at the time. Both of my kids were either um, daycare or um, elementary. My daughter's oldest and, and she was in elementary school. Um, so I went to court and when I went to court, I was begging the judge for just 90 days so I could just understand how to figure this. out. I did not want this foreclosure on my credit at all. Right. Um, literally broke down crying in this courtroom because I just didn't understand how did I let this happen? How did I let this person that I thought really, um, you know, had my best interest in mind, um, take me to a level that, um, just wasn't, um, what I knew was life, you know? Um, in the midst of that, I end up some type of way falling into radio, which is ironically crazy. I fell into radio and I was also doing, I was a foster parent because I wanted to give back to kids that did not have an opportunity, um, such as I did when I was growing up. Hey Gus, hey Seth, hey Anthony, hey, what's going on guys? Um, so I started my nonprofit organization, which is Hattitude, and I started working with uh, kids of domestic violence. And I was actually given four kids that were in a domestic violence situation. Mind you, I'm still going through a foreclosure. <laughs> I'm losing my home. Um, in that process, though, um, I was doing radio. A lot of people in Tampa know me from radio. And um, no one knew that I was going through all of this at that time. I mean, if you were to ask people, they thought my life was like literally put together. But mind you, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get out of this freaking mess that I was in. So, um... What I end up doing is I got an attorney and I had to file bankruptcy. Like, oh my God, I'm filing bankruptcy and I'm not even 30 years old. <laughs> That's how I was thinking, right? Hey, Anthony. Hey, Tony. So um, I did. I filed bankruptcy and I lost my home. Just point blank. That's how it happened. 
Um, but in the midst of that, my career was happened to be going in another direction. Um, so I'm like, okay, I can't talk to these people and keep them positive And my life is screwed up. Like, how the hell can I do that? Right. You know? So I'm like, okay, I just can't tell anybody this, you know, I'm just going to keep that a secret. Um, but the more and more I started working with people and working with women, mind you, I'm working with kids and also kind of working with women. You're right. Dante multitasking. That's what I was doing. Um, I started seeing that my story was very common and not just with women, with men too, that have went through a separation and, you know, going through foreclosure, didn't know how to do it. Maybe I can't see their kids. Um, you know, and I don't know that aspect of it because as a mom, we normally have our kids, but I don't understand how it is to be a man and not able to see their kids because of a bitter ex or a bitter spouse. You know, I don't, I don't understand that, but I can, I know that that would be very hard for me to go through because my kids were something that kept me going. Even those four foster kids that I had, they gave me life. They gave me so much energy because I wanted to see the best out of them. Well, in the midst of I'm thinking things were going to be better and going to get better. My daughter's father dies in like a freak motorcycle accident. And I think that's where I went to my lowest place because me and him are really great friends and great co-parents. And the night before he passed away, you know, it was oh, I hate talking about this because I always cry. But the night before we he passed away, I um we had a real heart heart to heart conversation about, you know, the growth of his child and how, you know, happy with it. We were able to, um, to parent the way we parent and that, um, he was just very blessed that I, I was his, his child's mother. And I, I wasn't one that kept his daughter away from him, you know? Um, so the morning that I found out my daughter was actually going to her little football, um, I tear about this because it's so sad for me. I um she was she was at her football game, you know, little league games, and you know they they have the little homecomings and things like that. And she was at her homecoming game. Um, and my mother caught me hysterically crying in my ear, like yelling, and my daughter is looking at me, and you know I'm I'm trying to keep calm because I know my reaction is going to be how her reaction is going to be. Hey, good morning, Bruce. How are you? And, um, so I made the decision to not tell her at the, ex at the game, you know, I just felt like it was something I shouldn't tell her. Hey, Regina, good morning. Um, and so I walked around for about six hours holding this in, um, and for those of you that are just joining me, I'm just talking about why I do what I do, how I have transitioned to where I'm at now. Um, and, um, I decided to just hold it in and I wanted to tell her about the passing of her dad around family. Um, so at, you know, nine years old, you know, she had a support system. So I had my shades on, you know, I'm walking around the, the football field, you know, trying to just keep my eyes were just bloodshot red because I had been crying. But mind you, you know, no one can see me because I have I had my dark boys on. And, you know, y'all know about them dark boy shades. If y'all know about them shades. <laughs> um, and so. I got home and I told her and, um, you know, I just kind of, I just broke down, you know, it was just kind of like I lost my best friend. And if for those of you who have lost someone, um, it's really hard to bounce back, especially when you're going through so much, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of, you know, losing my home. Like I said, filing bankruptcy and, and I would have never thought in a million years that I would have ever had to file bankruptcy, you know, um, let alone even talk about it. You know, I'm turning my vehicles in because I can't afford it. And it was all because of a sour relationship. If you're in a relationship and your spouse is against you and not working with you, that's not the type of relationship, you know, that you need to be in. Um, and that's not the type of relationship. It's going to be toxic from day one. I love when I see people in a relationship that have the same interest in my, and they work for each other like that is the key to a successful relationship. But if you're in competition with one another, it's not going to work. It's not going to be a great outcome. But anyways, um, I took some time to myself um, and um, I, well, I thought I took time to myself. I believe my way of overcoming this death and this foreclosure, you know, um, was me being in the community, 
For those of you who know me, I was on every scene. I was feeding the homeless um, downtown. I was feeding Robles Park, feeding Jackson Heights. I was giving clothes and shoes away to Jackson Heights. Miss Gloria, I gave her some clothes. A um, couple of men had just got out of prison and they didn't have clothes. So I had, you know, already collected a lot of men clothing. So I donated them to her so they can at least, you know, be able to go on a job interview and have clothes to kind of keep moving since they just came home. I was educating um, uh, folks from prison to uh, how to get their voters um, their rights restored. You know, I was doing um, so much in this community. I was teaching social media classes. Mind you, I'm learning social media classes. I was hosting event after event after event. And people that were watching me thought my life was together. But it wasn't. <laughs> I was not happy. I think I kept myself busy not to deal with the grief and not to deal with the shame and the embarrassment of where my life was at such a young age. Um, so I took some time off. I just had to just get away for a second. I just had to stop everything and start telling people, no, no, I can't help you. No, I can't um, host your event. And no, I can't host your event for free because back then they wanted everything for free. I'm a single mother. I cannot afford to do events for free. At that point, I am really a nonprofit. <laughs> so, um, yes, Darren, I understand. I mean, it's crazy. God had me through that whole process. You're absolutely right. Um, so what I did is um, my first process, my first step to get out of this process was to complete and close my, my bankruptcy, which it was um, six months of having to pay back um, a certain portion of what was owed. Um, so I focused on making sure I paid my debt. Um, and, um, I was able to get him from under the house because if I didn't have an agreeing party, then I wasn't able to, um, at least try to even go through the bankruptcy if he didn't agree. Um, so after that, I kind of sat down and wrote a little roadmap of what I wanted to do. What's something that I really enjoyed and why I wanted to do it. Hey, Star, how you doing, hon? Oh, my God, Star, I love her to death. Someday she will post some of the sweetest stuff on my things. And she doesn't even know how she uplifts me. Um, but she is just amazing. And she's been with me over the years. I really I love you to death, Star. You, you really sometimes pick me up on my really down days. Um, Bruce says that is so true. It's hard to find the type of relationship. That's why I'm single now. Yeah single parent. Um, that's, it's absolutely right. Um, so then I went back to school and, um, I, school was just amazing. I love learning. That's something I've always done. I've just loved learning. Went back to school, got my master's in the mix of me going back to school. You know, I was dating here and there and whatnot. Um, but I found a um, guy actually younger than me too. This is ironic too. Um, that, you know, kind of, kind of brought a little little peace to mind you know was able to get away and kind of hang out um and end up getting pregnant in the midst of me you know right before I was about to graduate I want to say about three or four months before I was about to graduate and I was so 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 sick I wanted to quit but I knew my plan that I wrote out so um I stuck to the plan um and and, and even crazy guys opened a freaking group home while all of this is going on, like you would think somebody would say, Ebony, go somewhere and sit down. But I, I, for some odd reason, I just felt like I had to keep busy. Opened the group home, which was a great experience, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and when I realized that the group home, it wasn't as when when you people ask you about opening a group home, they make it seem like it is the hardest thing in the world. Nobody can do it. So I wanted to prove a lot of people wrong and myself wrong that I was able to do it. Opened the group home with horrible credit and even purchased a freaking ranch, if you want to call it, for this group home. That is God, because there was no way I was going to be able to do that without anybody else, you know. And um, operated the group home for about a year and a half. And then I said, this is not what I want. I want to teach people and help people get through the struggles, especially when it comes to starting a business, because there's so many people out here that tell you they can produce results. There's so many people out here that can tell you they can help you and they can coach you and they can do that. But they're just selling you something that you don't need and can't help you. And they're not even helping you when it comes to the mindset, because doing a business, whether it's online or as a traditional business, it is a mindset that you have to be able to overcome because you're going to have many, many, many bad days. You're going to have so many distractions and so many people going to be in your ear telling you not to do it, you know, and you have to keep yourself going and, and positive about you know, what you want to do and stick to your goals. You know, it's a lot of people. I hear this all the time. They say, 
Um, uh, uh, Star says so you can have peace of mind. Yes, thank you, Star. Do I face this? So glad to hear your story. Oh yeah, I know. I never tell my story, right? <laughs> um, so I'm telling my story today. Um, but I hear a lot of people say it's a lonely road to the top, and it doesn't have to be a lonely road to the top. One thing I learned is that I had to open up to my support system, whether it's my family or my friends. I had to understand who my support system was and explain to them what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, whether they wanted to come on board. But I needed them to understand why I was on the mission that I was on. Hey, Isaac. Hey, Charles. Hey, Herman. I needed them to understand why I was on the mission that I was on because um It is easy to get thrown off because your mom says you're not going to make $100,000 online or your dad says who does business online? Who even why why would somebody even want to coach? That's crazy. Um, It's hard to stay focused and stay driven towards your goal when people don't believe it because that's something they wasn't taught. They were taught the traditional way of life. Um, So all in all, um, when I went back to school and when I first got out of school, I had my baby, mind you, when I, and this is a crazy story. When I was six months pregnant, I was going to my first meeting um, about doing business online. And when I went to that meeting, my car blew a tire. Right. I just paid two hundred and fifty dollars for this meeting. OK. Um, you know, I was pinching my changes all together, pinching all my pennies together. OK. I had a flat tire called um, uh, uh, my insurance company. They're supposed to be sending somebody out. Right. He said he's going to be there in an hour and a half. I'm like, I just paid two hundred and fifty dollars. I am not missing an hour and a half with this conference. I'm going to change my own freaking tire. So that damsel in the stress story that people say when you're on the side of the road, men to come over and somebody to help you change your tire. That is a myth. OK, big belly and all. I was out there changing my tire by myself. People blew the horn, but no one stopped and helped me. All right. <laughs> but I was determined to get to this meeting to understand what I need to know how to do business on freaking line because it is different and it is a process and once you understand the process you can be very successful um so i did change my tire caught my mom up like hey um he's out of town so he can't come help me you know can you just come um switch cars with me that way i'm not riding around on a dummy tire you know um and it was raining right we got the tire my mom got there by the time i got the all the lugs unscrewed i'm taking the tire off so she was like no you can't lift the tire you may hurt the baby i'm like yeah you're right so she, you know we rolled the tire down and mind you my mother had just recently had two hip surgeries so she shouldn't have been out there helping me neither <laughs> so we get this tire in the back of my truck um and we put the dummy tire on and or the spare tire on and here all of a sudden here comes the uh triple a guy you know we're like listen if you touch one of those lug wrench screws when you gonna fight out here today because i'm not signing that paper paying you for anything because you did not help me out today as soon as i got in the car my mother got in my my car it started pouring down raining like insane um made it to this event um, my hair is looking crazy as you don't know what. I come in there. There's a lot of women in there that are doing business. Um, some are struggling in their business. And I wanted to, you know, find out why. Why are we all struggling? What is going on? How is this person that I'm putting so much trust? How is this person going to help me? Um, so for a couple of months, I did put trust in this person. And I was, it was sad to find out that it she wasn't who I thought she was going to be in my life. Now in someone else's life, it may be different, but in my life, that wasn't the type of mentorship that I needed to get me where I'm going. But what it did do for me is that it taught me what, what other people and how other women in my situation could easily go to the wrong person and be sold something when they're already pinching pennies to make it. And the thing about it is we have a dream and we have a vision and we have passion and we want to do it so bad that we're taking our last with our last dime, sometimes not even being able to buy groceries, we haven't decided, should I buy groceries? Should I pay the cable bill? Should I pay the phone bill? Or you know what? Should I pay? You know, we're, we're having to decide how we're spending our money. But at the same time, it's something in us that's driving our passion that makes us want to do this business or whatever dream or vision that you want to do is something that keeps telling you to do it. Um, and then you also have these, these, these skeptics out here that are taking your kindness and your passion for weakness and they're using you. And then what happens is you get overwhelmed. You think everything's a scam and you stop. 
And then again, you try again, you know, 20 years down the line, 10 years down the line, when this is something that has always been in you, it's just you've had the wrong direction. So I decided to focus on helping women just like me. Fellas, it's nothing against you at all. I do help guys who really want help. Um, mind you, some guys who that I've helped in the past come as if they want help, but then it's always something else. So that's why I stray away from the men because they don't keep 100% honest. It's like another undercover reason why they want to connect. And I'm, I'm really focused on, you know, bettering myself and people around me. Um, so I focus on women that are single parents, you know, that have been through the roughest of the rough, you know, have not always had a best life or have had a great, great life, just made a couple of bad decisions that has taken your life down a whole nother journey that you've never decided, um, or that you never thought you would ever experience. So, um, I put my focus on helping more and more women. And the more that I started helping out, the more that I started reaching out, the more that I started telling my story, telling, you know, listen, I've been through foreclosure, honey. I've been through bankruptcy. I've been through um, a separation. I've been through losing a close one. You know, I've been through still overcoming obstacles. And I'm going to continue to overcome obstacles because that's a part of growth and that's a part of success. But you can get up out of this rut. You know, the other day I had a homegirl come by my house unannounced, just drove by and stopped over and she was boohoo crying about she's just stuck and she can't get out of this place and I told her listen you can get out of whatever situation you want to get out of as first you have to get control of your mind and stop thinking stop the negativity and start feeding the positivity and sit down and really look at your life and determine where you want to go hey QT what's going on and determine where you want to go so in a nutshell, because I know we're, you know, it's morning, people are trying to get to work or in traffic or, you know, on Facebook at your desk. It's supposed to be on it. <laughs> I used to do that too, y'all. But um, in a nutshell, um, it was my entire journey of uh, just determining who I am and what made me and, and some of the situations that I've been in to want to affect and have an impact on those around me. Of course, we all want to make money in our business. And one thing that I have learned is that it's not about making money. It's about having a impact. It's about impacting those around you. And when you impact, oh my goodness, everything, doors open that you would have never expected to open. So if you change your mindset from thinking that all I want is money and I need to sell, 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 and you just really want to just add value to someone else's life, that value may change someone two, three years down the line that you never thought you could or that you, that you never even thought you had even reached this person. And that in turn brings that money that you're looking for. So there is my story for the first time on Facebook Live looking a hot mess, y'all, because I am also driven um, right about now to lose all this baby fat. <laughs> So um, I haven't been wanting to, uh, you know, do, I've been working out every afternoon and um, changing how I eat. Yes, Charles, you're absolutely right. Inspired, don't stop, you know, and that goes for Darren. Had, I, Darren, also, you have a really great story in regards to losing your mom. Like he's a really tough through that situation. You know, I'm preparing myself for when that day happens because it's going to happen, you know. Um, but, and I don't want it to, to, to knock me down for two and three years, you know, and, and also I got to make sure I'm strong for my kids. So, um, again, that's, that's why I do what I do. I really love when I see someone that has been in my situation or even worse than me overcome a lot of challenges and, um, and do things that they always dreamed about. I love when they can tell the naysayers and show the naysayers that they couldn't do it, that they can do it. I love that they, yeah, you should have beat that face a little bit. No, I want to come all natural, no face beat. I want y'all to get me a hundred percent authentic ebony, just how it is, um, without being all made up and pretty. And I thought about actually getting all made up and pretty for this video, but I wanted to come to you, um, from exactly where I am and no matter how good or bad I was looking, but I wanted to be 100 on this video without being made up um, because I got I wanted you guys to really understand that uh, it was important for me to say this today. It took a lot for me to um, to do a Facebook live and talk about my personal life. But I do understand in my business and it's a lot of women that um, that follow me and that work with me. And I, I want them to see me 
as who I am without being Coach Ebony, you know. I want them to see me as just plain old Eb, you know, leave the crew, you can drop the cruise, just Eb, um, and and understand that I too have gone through just as much um, as the next person and maybe not as rough, but those were things that changed my life to make me want to have an impact on others' lives. So the best that I could tell you on this video is to... Um, no matter what situation that you're in right now, no matter what people may tell you that you can't do and stop doing it, you know, surround yourself with a community of people that um, and that that support you and that feed into you and that and, and support and, and gives you that energy that you need on those bad days. Because so many people on Facebook, you guys give me so much inspiration on days that I never thought to talk about it, you know. Um, so all in all, um, my goal is to keep impacting women, um, to keep sharing my story. Um, maybe I'll get better at talking about it. It won't take as long. And maybe the next time I'll look better <laughs> and won't tear up, you know. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I want to help as many women as I possibly can reach the level of success that they desire, um, no matter how many obstacles they face. So gotta go. That is my reason why. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. If you are catching this video on the replay, make sure you put replay in the comments. Um, if you want to share something, share something. If you want to give some inspirational words, of course, do that as well. Um, because you never know who's watching this video who may need it. Hey, Z. Hey, Z. I had to say Z, girl. I almost messed your name up. Hey, Keandra. What's going on? But um, gotta go. Hope you guys check out this video and give me feedback and just, you know, um, Help me keep growing, y'all, because I want to keep inspiring. Bye.